Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a uh, disassembly video for you of this little guy right here. Well, this big old guy, the Herman Knives Mantis. So, uh, first off, just to, in the name of checking everything out, we are, I believe we're dead center of May, and I can't tell whether it's the optical illusion of the Damascus here, but we are either dead center or maybe slightly favoring show side, but either way, we're good to go. And we need to take out the pivot, we need to take out these three screws here, and I think that's about it. This pivot here, um, I think this is like T23 or something like that. Um, I could get it out of there with a T20 if I wanted to, but instead I will go on ahead and I will open up the, 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 the case that it came with here. It includes a, a little tiny wrench tool, basically, that is designed to fit that particular pivot. So we'll go on ahead and put that in here. And since the other side is non-free spinning, I should just be able to rotate, 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 and remove this screw. I'm not a huge, huge fan of these kinds of, you know, I don't want to say proprietary because, dude, it's Torx, but of these kinds of tools in that way. Um, but at the same time, the fact that it is at its core an open standard and workable means it's fine. Um, but in some ways, I'd kind of prefer just a bit uh, rather than a tool like this because this is a little bit less straightforward than using a uh, just conventional screwdriver. But uh, what I'll do here is now grab onto this and rotate, rotate, rotate out of there. Beautiful. Okay, so we can take that out of there. And I'll go ahead and put my wrench back over there. One thing I want to keep in mind is that this may well, oh, it does indeed have free balls in there. There are little tiny ball bearings in there that are uh, able to roll off and do their own thing. So I need to be very careful about that as I'm taking this apart. These are T6 in the back here, looks like. So let's go on ahead and remove those. Those little free balls are going to be something I need to keep a close eye on as I proceed down this path because they will try and roll out from everywhere. And this is, by the way, part of the reason I'm using this mat uh, to hold everything because it has a rim around all sides as well as these little um, sort of sub uh, subsections, if you will, uh, that should make it a little bit easier for everything to happen. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty feeling okay about this, but we'll, we're going to see. So, okay, already it's taken itself apart here, so let's let it. Uh, I think uh, this back screw isn't quite out yet enough. There we go. I should be able to lift this whole affair off now. Maybe? Oh, come off it. That look good. Well, maybe that one's still too tight. And maybe this. Either way, we are almost there. Could that have slipped back into position? Oh yeah, okay, now we're good to go. All right, so we have removed the uh, one of the liners here, and indeed we're seeing that there are... Uh, so there is a bearing cage, but there are also loose bearings. So what we see here is that there is a bearing right there that has come out, and it belongs in this little hole right here. So, yeah, we need to be careful about that. But what I'm going to go on ahead and do is uh, I'm going to put this bearing over here, I'm going to transfer that bearing to be with it over there. So that way I know that everything, you know, in there is from that side. This is also a little on the dirtier side, uh, which is interesting. So uh, here, I'll put that there. Right now, all of the balls are accounted for. So I can go ahead and clean this guy up as normal. So uh, yeah, it's a little dirtier in there than I'd sort of expected. So I'll go ahead and clean this out. And hopefully we'll be able to do a little... Um, improvement to the action, not that it was at all bad. We see, looks like they've carbonized the lock face there. Um, we see that this has the, um, right here, has a separate liner in there uh, from the frame, so it is a liner lock rather than a frame lock. We see it is a multi-row bearings, which, by the way, is interesting. So, clean that up. Clean off the bearing race here and here. I'll go ahead and I'll clean off this washer. And we also see that there are washers on top of the titanium, which will just make things a little bit easier. I'll clean up the pivot here. Uh, and these have gotten a little, uh, sorry, this has gotten a little bit of carry here. 
so some of this dirt is going to be uh, organic, and uh, they, certainly they've gotten a bunch of flipping. So, yeah, uh, there's that. Okay, oh, and then clean off the blade. What is that? Is that a serial number? Let me zoom me in here so you can see what I'm after. That sure looks like a serial number, a sub-variety. Or a code. Um, but either way, interesting. 11DC18N. So it's probably not hex if there's an N in there. Yeah, it could just be a serial number. That's interesting. Uh, but yeah, so we're cleaning this guy off right here. This is a Damacore blade, and by the way, you can tell that. One of the ways you can tell that is if we look right here, this pattern here is not just like lasered on or anything. It's integral to the knife. You can see here that the polished portion in the middle, like the same pattern, follows all the way through the top and the sides and everything like that. So there's that. That's cool. Uh, and then we see here the proudly made in Poland, which is... Um, Kind of interesting to write in English. I'm going to be real with you there. But at the same time, um, th this is uh, proudly made in Poland. So there is that. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is clean off the bearing race. I'm sorry, the bearings. So in order to do that, I'm going to take another um, cleaning cloth here and then just pick up the bearing and do one of these things to it. Uh, I think I already plugged the tools site, but dickshabazz.com slash tools has details about these patches and everything else. But... Yeah, so I'm just cleaning this off here. These aren't actually too dirty. Um, and, oh, see, one of the little balls came out of there. So I got to be a little careful with that. But hopefully I can pop that. Oh, crap. So it just 100% went out into the world. I heard it impact the little bench between my legs. All right, now we, we come at the portion of the disassembly referred to jauntily as ball seeking. Come here, ball. I know roughly the, the range that it could have hit. Whoa, time warp. Yeah, so uh, about 24 hours later, bearing appears to be gone. Uh, like entirely, I have no idea where it went off to. It disappeared off into a void someplace. Maybe it's still around. Like I tried a bunch of stuff. Like I spent a bunch of time on the floor looking for it with flashlight. Ended up vacuuming with a fresh bag, hoping I could pull it out of there. And no, it seems to be gone. Like it's gonna, I'll come home one day and it's gonna be sitting on my pillow with a little note that says, make no further inquiries. I have no idea where it's gone. It's off to the, who knows. But anyways, uh, what I, ended up doing is grabbing another bearing from another Herman, and uh, we'll go ahead and finish that, and I'll, uh, I'll ask the Herman folks for a uh, <laughs> for another bearing, or at least a link to buy more of them. This is, of course, a lesson, uh, both in terms of, um, well, be careful, and in terms of don't make knives with bearings that are non-captive. So anyways, uh, that said, we are getting to a point where we're ready to start the reassembly here, now that I have finally freaking done this. Uh, oh, boy. So uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is clean off this little washer here. And I'm going to rebuild this from this side, as would make sense. And the biggest issue that I have right now is that right now, after I've cleaned off the bearing race itself, the bearings are able to just kind of fall out of there, right? The, 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 the grease, the oil was the thing that was keeping the bearings inside of this race. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, and I'm going to see if I can reposition this a little bit, is I'm going to just drop this into place here. Uh, and I've already screwed it up because one of the bearings is loose underneath there. Yeah, there two of them were. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here, I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here. My goal right now is to get all of those bearings here and here into this little race right on there. The way I'm going to go ahead and do that is I'm going to start off and I'm going to take a little bit of nano oil here. And I'm going to take a set of very fine tweezers uh, right here. So I'm using 10 weight nano oil, and very fine tweezers. And my goal is going to be to just pull every one of these guys off for the moment. And then, come here. All right, he says, oh, there it went. 
what I'm going to go ahead and do is drop this bearing cage into position. I am going to then go ahead and put a little bit of lubrication into some of the holes of this bearing cage. The goal being that when I then rotate the bearing cage itself, it will distribute the lubrication along the bottom of it and thus eventually into the little holes themselves. I am massively over lubricating this pivot right now. It's probably not necessary, but it is gonna be a thing. I'm also going to put a little bit of lubrication onto the tips of my tweezers here, which should, I hope, make these a uh, little stickier, so to speak. And so my goal now is gonna just be to drop all of these guys in here. This is a pain in the neck. I'd like to be very clear about that. For those of you taking a look at home, uh, it's just not straightforward. And uh, unfortunately, that's just the nature of the beast. You see how the bearing, by the way, is sticking to the end of the tweezer? That's just because of the lubrication on the tweezer themselves. Themselves? Itself? Either way, um, so that's actually a good thing. Uh, it makes these a little easier to control and a little less likely to jump away and roll under something, he says. Uh, but still, uh, come on, get out of there. And it's something I can take full advantage of by periodically like dipping my uh, tweezers into the oil itself. My goal is just going to be to kind of continue rotating this around here and dropping these bearings in step by step, one at a time here. There we go. Beautiful. You go there. Did I really just freaking launch another one? Did I? I feel like that one's just gone now. I thought I heard it over hit the... Okay, it is for this precise reason that I just didn't take apart... Like, I didn't put the other knife that's being the donor for this, the other Herman... I didn't put it back together yet, so I can just grab another one. But, oh my God, is this a pain in my neck. What it also means is I'm going to use a little bit more lubrication here. Oh. <laughs> These are especially unpleasant, but it just means I need to be very careful. Frankly, I need to not be pinching the tweezers at all. I need to be using the oil to do this to get these in there. Come on now. In this case, I'll pinch those together. There we go. Wow. What I need to do this in, actually, rather than my office with the mat that has the little boundaries around it, which apparently aren't helping at all, uh, is a large um, satellite dish painted pure white with a table in the middle of it and myself sitting at that table, probably naked, enjoy that image, just so it can't go in any clothing. And then, are you about to tell me that I have ended up with one extra bearing here? Are you really about to tell me this? How do I have an extra bit? Oh, okay. No, how do I have an extra bearing here? This is completely nuts. Please tell me one of those is a hole. Does that mean? Uh, if I have an extra bearing right here, what that actually means is that the bearing that I lost yesterday went into this area with all the other bearings or the one I just grabbed it did. I... Wait. No, this doesn't make sense. Okay, do I have a bearing in every one of these holes? So this means that the bearing I lost today either went back in here or the one I lost yesterday did. But either way, 
<laughs> I'm bad. Okay, so there's that. Um, we're gonna go on ahead and just pretend that everything's okay. Pretend that I'm not broken inside by tiny little balls. Um, that sounds way wrong in so many meaningful ways. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll put the lubrication in here. Middle bit there. Okay, now what I gotta do is gently, gingerly here. Put that there. Now, at this point, the bearings in the bottom should be okay. Now, I've got a choice. I can try and do... Oh, God, I have to clean this one first. Okay, I got a choice here. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I am going to clean this by... Oh, taking this guy right here. There is a bearing in the middle of it. I don't care. And I'm just going to do this. I'm not going to lift it up. I'm not going to... I'm pushing my luck enough right now. Thank you. And I'm just using some rubbing alcohol. And I'm just rolling this around. And the goal of this, of course, and we can actually see that I'm accomplishing that goal and cleaning these bearings nicely, is to remove the existing oil. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply some oil here pretty broadly. With the dream being, and this is too much oil, but I hope you understand the gravity of my circumstance. The dream here being that this will hold all of these bearings in place. I will also use my little tweezers here to get this one in the middle here. I cannot believe that I ended up... Okay. Now the goal is to get as many of these transferred over to here as I can at once. There we go. That's in there. And I got all of them. Oh, no. Okay, so the lock bar is... I didn't put the lock bar down. Uh, okay. So I lift this up slightly. Can I get the lock bar passed? I can. Did I take out any of the bearings in the bottom? No, I did not. Okay. Now we are in the danger zone. Do, 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 da, 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 da. Um, because there is a bunch of loose bearings in here. The knife wants to disassemble itself by virtue of the lock bar tension. I need to get this pivot in place like nobody's freaking business. Because this pivot will keep all of the bearings in their proper positioning. This is not the proper... Like something feels out of alignment here. Okay, there we go. All the bearings look like they're in place. Uh, something's still messed up in there. Why are you not working? Maybe it's just a lack of backspacer that's messing with things. But what I'm going to try and do here is keep pressure on this to keep everything in place. Here, I'll zoom back out for you. This is... This is testing my skill. I'm going to be real with you here. It's not quite like buck rapid fire bad, uh, but oh, and it's not a, it's not a normal screwdriver, so I can't just like, okay. Uh, let me try and rotate this closed here. Okay, now I want to get this to a reasonable tension. There we go. I think something just popped in. Hopefully a good thing. We're not cross-threaded or anything, so that's nice. At least. Mr. Herman, just give us a bit, please. <laughs> I appreciate what you're doing here, but just give us the damn bit. <laughs> okay, I think we're getting close to where we need to go here. Okay, so now what I got to do is look inside of here. Okay, my pivot is still way too loose, but that's sort of okay. I'm just trying to keep everything in place. So I know that I have one ball bearing that should be here. 
indicating that I am insane. That's fine. Whatever. I can live with it. Did I really spend an hour and a half or so looking for a ball bearing that was right there only to yeet another one across the room? Oh, my God. Okay. Um, so, anyways, what I'm going to go ahead and do now is then put the backspacer in place. And in order to do this, I kind of need to... So, I'll, I'll put a little bit of thread locker on here. The backspacers on these are not straightforward. You kind of got to spear them. Right, you got to get everything in perfect alignment, and I'm going to use what I'm going to use here. I need a thing. I'll just try and use my finger here to get things in alignment. But I got to get this. Okay, good. I got one of the screws in there, and I'm using again a little bit of thread locker here, because God knows I don't want to take this thing apart again anytime soon. Um, okay, really. Am I unskilled? Well, yeah, uh, clearly I've, I've demonstrated that, but good Lord. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think this is about to be a how not to disassemble and maintain the video. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and tighten these down. This had better work. This had better be like beautiful freaking ambrosia of action. Okay, so now I'm looking in here. I'm looking very specifically down in the middle here. I'm going to charge my flashlight, uh, or I did charge my flashlight. What we see here is I am seeing no extra bearings in the gap there is good. Nothing under the lock bar. That's beautiful. Uh, oh. Okay, that's a really sweet action. I gotta be real with you here, but oh boy, at what cost? I tighten that up any, does it help me? There's no play. We are dead centered here. here. I'll zoom you back out again. We are dead centered, and the knife is good to go. So the moral of this story is, A, do not disassemble this pocket knife. I mean, you can't, right? It, it was fine. And if I had been at the bottom of the satellite dish, by the way, I never finished that. That way, if I drop the bearing, it'll just roll to the bottom of it, and I just pick it up again, right? But anyways, I... Uh, the moral of the story is A, don't, but B, if you do, be careful, put like a, a surround around your workstation here. Uh, Herman should probably ship extra bearings with this. Or maybe better, Herman should just not ship this with loose bearings. And uh, now it's running beautifully. It was before, but it's I'd argue it's even a little sweeter action-wise, and uh, it's good to go, but boy, was that an odyssey. So anyways, there you go. I hope this has been interesting to you uh, and that it hasn't been traumatizing as it has been for some of the rest of us, and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.